So I was hearing about the whole news on Roe versus Wade. And I also was hearing that it wasn't in all of the states, but it, by it being in even one state or two or three or four, or maybe 10 states, maybe more than 10, just having that happen, it could create a domino effect. So I also was learning that there had been multiple protests um, there was a protest. There's been several protests here in California of Los Angeles. Downtown, there's always protests for a lot of the latest news events and a lot of the political fallouts that have happened recently. And so this was uh, 50 years of, you know, women's rights and now it's in danger and it is in grave danger and it starts with this and I'm not only going to say that women's rights are in danger but racism is at an all-time high and even more so and it's not even hidden anymore so you have women like Mary Miller this woman here who is a Republican and she's basically stating or validating all of the things that people were feeling and not just feeling about this whole decision <clears throat> or knowing. Let's put it that way. It's not just a feeling, it's fact. Um, so at a Trump rally in Illinois, Representative Mary Miller, I believe that's her name, Mary Miller, uh, she calls the reversal of Roe versus Wade a victory for white life. And so Miller is a representative, uh, and Rodney and Rep Representative Rodney Davis are facing off in the GOP primary battle where some 12 million in outside money is flooding the 15th congressional district and so <clears throat> there's a whole lot of articles that are coming out about the decisions with the overturning of Roe versus Wade in um, several states and how some people are already making plans to go to states where it hasn't been threatened that it's still pretty much where um, women have some some rights, but I, I would bet there's going to be some attacks on the women's rights in states where they haven't declared bans on um, abortion, so, um, <clears throat> and abortion rights. So you see pictured here, um, Mary Miller is her name. And I'll, I'll be honest to say, I really believe that Make America Great Again was really meant to be said or read to this group of people who have this belief. Just like she just basically, Mary Miller, she just said openly what they all wanted to hear and what they all this base, this uh, audience agrees collectively on is white life, is preserve the preservation of white life. And, <clears throat> and it's, it's not in, in a sense that all lives matter. It's just, it's more focused on white and not just I believe it's just more for people who have these beliefs in politics and they're deeply rooted in the preservation of, of white um, running government and controlling the powers that be and having this, the last, the first and the last say so on every law 
and not giving anyone a chance. And so what I was going to say is I believe Make America Great Again really was the pre, pre, or say pre-beginning of what we're about to experience here is blatant, outright, open racism that is in politics, <clears throat> where <clears throat> now people can come out and say the things that they felt uncomfortable about saying before because of this so-called victory that Mary Miller is proclaiming. And I believe Make America Great Again really meant Make America White Again. So I felt like this was not at all um, I would say this is the best article. This came at the, the right time. This article and many other articles that focus on this Mary Miller's comment because her comment is not just single-handedly her own views. And I believe she just is a mouth for a many people that are in that mindset and in that base of audience that they um, collectively agree on these issues. So freshman GOP representative Mary Miller, she was standing next to former President Donald Trump at a rally and this was to boost her re-election bid in the downstate of Minden. And reading from a notebook, it said that the Supreme Court's decision to overturn the landmark abortion rights case Roe v. Wade was a victory for white life. So the crowd at Adams County Fairgrounds on Saturday cheered. So that basically validates a lot of the things that, you know, people had been seeing or hearing or saying on their their uh, podcast when they when they felt that um, and, and that the Make America Great Again really was uh, to rile up racism and rile up th this group that only wants to focus on only the white lives. And that everyone else that isn't white is an outsider and that you don't belong. And there's this threatening feeling that their race was declining. And so they were feeling that they needed to overturn the Roe vs. Wade because there wasn't a large number or enough white people or not enough babies being born that are white. And when they were hearing from these research centers where they talk about the decline in different uh, groups of people and the increase of different cultures that aren't white, it made a lot of the, this base particular, in particular here, feel some type of way of, of a threat, that they were threatened, their race was threatened. And so that's why you saw also the January 6th event, and it was bloody, it was gory, it was violent, and it could happen again. And so I'm just saying what other people might not want to say, but I really do believe this is opening the door to revert back in time where not only women's rights are threatened, but the rights of people of color, the rights of people that are black, the rights of people that are 
in LGBT people, LGBTQ, the rights of anyone who isn't in line with this culture of white is supreme and white is more important above all else. And so <clears throat> I do believe that you have a group in Donald Trump's camp that their whole premise is to use whatever they have to use as tools, people to speak on their behalf, even if they have to use people who aren't white, to go against those who are not in line with their mindset and their political um, movement on quote unquote making America great again, which really in turn means making America white again. White lives are important above all else. And Mary Miller basically is just confirming that. So in reading from the notebook, said the Supreme Court decision to overturn this landmark abortion right case, Roe v. Wade, was a victory for white life. So this crowd at this fairground, they cheered, so a horrified Twitterverse lit up. As they heard this, the woman basically, she spoke at a rally and she said it and it's in a clip. So one tweet with a clip of Mary Miller's, quote, white life, quote, was at 10.6 million views as I write this on Sunday. And this is the person that is writing this article. And so there's a clip and you can look at it at your leisure if you want to look at the 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 article. All you have to do is put in Mary Miller. So Miller is a farmer from Oakland and raised in Naperville and married to GOP state representative Chris Miller. Miller is in a battle for her political survival facing another rep Republican in the, t in the Tuesday Illinois primary. So Representative Rodney Davis of Taylorsville, who is seeking a sixth term. So you have to know who, what state you live in, the neighborhood you live in, the, the government uh, that is um, running your country and where they're headed. And specifically, if you're in uh, certain areas like red states, then you would realize that you're going to encounter um, people like Mary Miller and Donald Trump, who basically their whole premise is veering towards the right wing extremism and the, the right wing white racial extremism that they're putting, basically putting out in their, their quotes, their statements, their speeches, and how they represent themselves. So it even has it, there's no making a mistake about what she said. She's basically being honest and stepping forward, and she feels emboldened now because of the overturning of Roe versus Wade, because that's what they've been working towards this whole time. So here's her entire quote. President Trump, on behalf of all the MAGA patriots in America, I want to thank you for the historic victory for white life in the Supreme Court yesterday. Our victories for life and the Second Amendment 
would have have been possible if the never Trump R.I.N.O.s had gotten their way. Okay, so there is enormous national interest in this central Illinois primary where Trump is trying to increase the number of MAGA Republicans. MAGA, in short, is Make America Great Again, which really means Make America Republican-run, white Republican-run. And if you aren't white, you're just someone he's using so that you can basically bring more people to this uh, following and it's it's really sad because it's going to create a domino effect so in the house who make fealty okay not just mere loyalty to trump a priority okay so maga is a reference to Trump's slogan, Make America Great Again, like I said, but I really do believe it was Make America White Again. So Republican in name only is a term hurled against Republicans seen as not part of the conservative wing of the party. So you still have Republicans who they're not extremists, they may not have democratic views, uh, uh, Democrat, solely Democrat views, but they might lean sort of in the middle, but they still are Republicans, but they're not extreme where they would say something like what Mary Miller or push what Mary Miller and Donald Trump have been pushing with the January 6th uh, coup. And now you've got Mary Miller just basically blurting out what everyone that has suspected that their whole camp is about, their whole base. So that is the essential issue in this Miller-Davis primary. So as of Sunday, according to the Federal Election Commission records, more than $12 million in spending from outside groups has flooded the 15th Congressional District Primary, about evenly divided in bolstering Davis or Miller. So the winner of the primary in the heavily Republican district is virtually assured to clinch the seat in November. So what they want to do is get as many people who believe, not just any Republican, they want extremist right wing extreme all the way leaning right Republicans in these seats so that they can make these type of laws that now affect millions of people and some they are all for this and then you have others who it's hurting or it's going to hurt and now they see but too little, too late. When you don't act fast, you get this. So Davis said in a Sunday statement that Miller's white life comment was just another part of a disturbing pattern of behavior she's displayed since coming to Congress. And so this is why she uses the Biden basement strategy and refuses to answer questions or hold public events. And so Davis said that Miller has demonstrated that she is not fit for public office. So when I hear that, and I'm just going to step back from this article, what I'm seeing here is that they're electing people who are straight up racist, and they, they don't really like other people that aren't white and they could care less about them. Now they'll proclaim they do or they'll say they have, oh, we have white friends or we have white neighbors, but they don't really 
really have a relationship, a genuine relationship with anyone that is black or if they do have any type of anything with someone that is other than who they are, it's got to be someone that will basically be a mouthpiece or someone who will basically shoot shoot down their own people so that they could lift up this group right here. And I have to be honest to say that Clarence Thomas is one of them. He's just yet but one of them. Then you have Candace Owens. And then you have some others down the list. You can go down the list that basically they will step and fetch for these type of individuals. And as long as they're getting paid, as long as they can be their footstool and a mouthpiece for these individuals, and that's all their concern is. And so it's sad, but I want to also add in there that Clarence Thomas has, has a history. He has done some things, and he has not been held really accountable for his actions, especially when him and Anita Hill, they were in a hearing, and he basically put her in the hot seat. And he's had a history of not really, really uh, being professional in the workplace and pursuing women in a way that is uh, making sexual advances or worse. And somehow it's flipped around on the woman and I, she's made to feel like she's in the wrong. When deep down on the inside, people realize that Clarence Thomas has had a history and still has one that won't go away. And it's very negative when it comes to his dealings with females. So, <clears throat> and black females, that is, and black people. Um, so... He really doesn't, you know, uh, go in line with uh, who you would think for equality. It's more for him. It's, you know, he's reminds me of that character Samuel L. Jackson played in the Django, where he basically was like helping be a slave driver and he just kind of as long as he's fed and as long as he's well cared for and as long as he feels like he's living in a home and he's living under white people's rule he's good to go and I have to be honest there's a lot of them that are like that in politics and so I'm only saying what people don't want to say or they're afraid to say. And I have a way of saying it. It doesn't have to come off as necessarily negative where I'm using any types of, you know, uh, profanity. But you would understand where that comes from because it's a lot of anger out there in the world. And people have been mistreated and solely for their skin color. And it has never been resolved. And so whenever there are issues like this, when you see someone just stand up at a podium and basically spout out that this is a victory for the white lives. Notice she didn't say for all lives. She said the white lives. So you got to let that marinate for a moment there. And realize where she's coming from. So anybody that knows and has half a brain would know where that was coming from. And it ain't coming from a good place. I can tell you that. So he enclosed a photo of Miller with 16 of her grandchildren. 
Now, get this, her grandchildren, a multiracial group, including, according Wart to Wartman, a grandchild with Down syndrome. See, these are all children that, in her family, aren't all white. But this woman had the gall to say that. What about your own grandchildren? What about their lives? So these people don't even care about the people that they could be people that are married in their family that may not be white. But if this woman will say this, shame on you, Mary Miller. So Miller's anti-abortion credentials are not at issue here. This is about her saying white life and how whether she meant it or in Warman's view, just flubbed her words. What do you think, you guys? Do you think she flubbed her words? I don't think she flubbed her words. I don't think she made a mistake. I think she said what she really felt. And I believe she said what a lot of them wanted to hear, that believed that same, that same rhetoric. So Wartman in a sense, is asking for people to be charitable, to give Miller the benefit of the doubt. So there's probably been a flood of social media when they heard that video clip. Those that were out there and they heard white life. But when it comes to the benefit of the doubt, Miller does not offer it to others. Okay, so all news to Miller, that is, News that she does not like is, as she reminded us at the Trump rally, fake news. So that's what she uses. The same slogan that Trump used whenever they get caught basically telling how they really feel and why they're doing what they're doing. The racism and the blatantness and the emboldened empowerment an entitlement and the privilege that they feel and they just like basically let it out all on the podium and in front of the audience to let people know that racism is alive and kicking and has never left and it's more prevalent than ever before and it's deeply rooted in politics and the fabric of American life that they are trying to do whatever possible to flood the government with people like this. But when it comes to the benefit of the doubt, Miller does not offer it to others. So Miller has been in a jam before. So in an office less than a week, she said at a pro-Trump rally in Washington, Hitler was right on one thing. Let me read that to you again. This is coming from Miller, who has been in a jam before. So she said that Hitler was right on one thing. She was blasted for the uninformed and repugnant remark. So in her apology, which is really a hollow apology, because she basically said what she felt, and she messed up, but she didn't mess up. In her mind, that's how she felt. But she messed up because you have other people that hear this. And there are people that might be from the groups that she's referring to that are Republican. And they think maybe she made a mistake. I don't think they were mistakes. I think that's what she wanted to say. And she's not alone. That's the scary part. So she was blasted for her uninformed and repugnant remarks. So in her apology, she couldn't just own up to the mistake. It wasn't a mistake, folks. And leave it at that. So she also said some are trying to intentionally twist her words to mean something antithetical to my beliefs. What do you think? I'll let you be the judge of that. So twisting words? Let's see. Miller said at a rally that Davis voted for 
the sham January 6th witch hunt. A reference a reasonable person would take to be the January 6th committee investigating the Capitol attacks and Trump's role in trying to overturn an election. So in June 2021, the House voted 222 or 222 to 190 to create the panel. So only two Republicans voted for it. And they ended up on the committee. So Representative Adams Kinsler, Kinsinger of Illinois and Liz Cheney of Wyoming, she suggested that David Davis wanted Hillary Clinton to be president. Anyone who knows Davis, a conservative, anti-abortion Republican, understands that's ridiculous. So she portrayed Davis as a leader of the gun control movement, but he just voted against the gun control bills President Joe Biden signed into law, as did Miller. So Miller is asking, in the wake of her victory, for white life, that remark, for a break. Forgiving is one thing, but forgetting, that's a whole nother ballgame. Think about it. They're worried about keeping all of their guns. They're worried about their politics and white lives being the forefront and the privilege. And they're worried about everyone that isn't that isn't person of color. You have to be in their group. That is what they're concerned about. They're not concerned about the lives of others. Okay. So this makes it very troubling. I don't believe that she stumbled on her words. I believe that she meant to say what she meant to say, and she was honest and forth uh, coming with her words, and she's not the only one, and that's what's scary, because there are many Mary Millers out there and Donald Trumps. There are many people who are into Trumpism and white lives being at the forefront of all others. And so that right there in and of itself is telling you that not only Roe vs. Wade is very troubling for them overturning it, but these people who can blatantly just go to the podium and speak in front of national TV and not stumble on their words and say phrases and quotes such as these. That just tells you what time we are living in and that this, this right here, it only confirms what many have already suspected and have always talked about, that racism has never left and make America great again is not really a slogan for all but it's more a slogan for the victory of saving the white life and saving the purity of white life and preserving white life only in American country. When you have people who are into Trumpism beliefs and views, 